welcome to pratidwani where we try to humanize science i'm your host jv pawan kumar in today's episode i am delighted to introduce you to my guest uh, aditi sen aditi is a theoretical physicist and her specialization is in quantum information and quantum computation she is a professor at uh, harishchandra research institute allahabad allahabad is now of course called as prayagraj Aditi did her PhD at Gdańsk University in Poland. Subsequently, she was a Humboldt postdoctoral fellow at Hanover and uh, later on moved to Institute of Photonic Sciences at Barcelona. And I had the privilege of knowing her since her Barcelona days where I was also a postdoctoral fellow at the same institute where she was. In this particular episode, we're going to discuss about uh, her biography, how she became a researcher, and uh, her interest in quantum information and uh, quantum batteries which is equally an interesting concept we talked about uh, how motherhood has influenced her work and uh, her work and life and how she has been able to do cutting edge research with all this specific kind of uh, interests and uh, we also talked about the comparison and contrast between doing science in india and europe and uh, what she learned from her uh, varied experience in all these places where she has worked also we had a, a very nice segment in uh, bengali which was a short kind of talk by her where she you know, told us about her research and motivation and this is something i would want to introduce from now on with my guests where they're going to talk about their interest in their mother tongue for a very short brief uh, kind of a period of time of course uh, you will be able to uh, find all the references in the show notes uh, please to have a look at it for further information on aditi and uh, this is pratidwani where we try to humanize science welcome to pratidwani uh, aditi uh, it's a pleasure uh, having you on this particular uh, podcast uh, it's a podcast where we also try to humanize science Uh, so i'm very glad to have you on this particular podcast this is also the first conversation which i am having uh, and i'm delighted to have you as my guest so uh, welcome welcome thank the, you the- very much uh, pavan for actually giving me this invitation it's kind of a yeah, very my pleasure my pleasure yeah it's my Thanks. pleasure to be part of your this effort which i really appreciate and uh, thank you very much yeah yeah great great So uh, Aditi uh, tell us a little bit about your your childhood and uh, how how you ended up uh, becoming a, a scientist of uh, such a high caliber what what is uh, the story behind Aditi the scientist Yeah so um, okay I uh, as you know that I started my I mean journey in some sense from Kolkata uh, so my schooling is there uh till 10th and 12th i was in a school which are actually girls school okay. and uh, then and uh, uh, especially i spent some uh, first 10 years i was in a school which is uh, under control of ram krishna mission and then i moved to 11 and 12 in a school which is a girls school and that's called sakhavat memorial government girls school and it's mm-hmm. important because sakhavat is the lady muslim lady uh-huh. uh, she nice. actually has uh, initiated the uh, you know education among uh, girls uh, wonderful especially the muslim girls so this has a very uh, big tradition and very good wonderful history. and this is what what year roughly you're talking yeah, about yeah so it's around uh, i studied there from 1990 to 92 Okay. nice nice very nice uh, and yeah. uh, uh, because 90 when i passed out uh, class 10 uh, after that i moved to a college uh, doing my actually bachelor in uh, specialization or honors in mathematics and physics chemistry was my uh, just a pass subject i used oh wonderful so you you are a theoretical physicist who turned from mathematics to physics right exactly exactly uh, so uh, 
okay so uh, since i okay i this bethun college is also for girls and uh, okay. this is girls college and the important point is that bethun college is probably uh, or maybe surely the first women college in asia wow wonderful so it, wonderful. it is a quite a strong history so uh, many women uh, educationist scientist they have uh, started their career or the bachelor degree f- uh, from bethun college many freedom fighter are associated with uh, them because it is for you know women educations in the bachelor level it was started so many people were associated uh, with that um, so there are uh, very i mean what i call that uh it has some history uh, history so wh- wh- why do you think uh, aditi this this strong emphasis on education in in bengali culture this is something which is fascinating and uh, do you want to just tell a little bit about general background of why there is such a nice emphasis on education generally speaking yeah one thing probably that we learned also i mean as far as i understand that we learned from the a history book right because uh, yeah. initially uh, this was the capital of uh, english people and for their administration or they they want to manage their administration uh, they started education and of course that starts from some from calcutta and neighborhood so you know when the uh, the people who are associated with uh, mainly male okay uh they started the they, their school and this thing started and after that you know um, they, people also realized the uh, importance of education uh, for women and so uh, those colleges and those schools uh, started so uh, absolutely okay. absolutely and so, uh, since the education has i mean kind of initiated from that place uh, so initial uh whether you talk about uh, uh, whether a famous freedom fighter who are very i mean uh, or the or the scientist they are or many other areas uh, whether author or maybe painter other where the education uh, is required they are from many are from bengal or yes. that related yes. areas and you know there are role models then coming up so the people get motivated to go to school so absolutely i think absolutely. that is probably one of the reason that uh, yeah yeah because as you were mentioning i was also kind of remembering savitri bai pule uh, mm-hmm. in in pune uh, who mm-hmm. also played a very uh, very important role in establishing uh, uh, women education uh, in in maharashtra uh she is actually very well uh, known in, in and around pune unfortunately i think more re- people in india should know about her uh, i think that is something which is uh, yeah. very important. yeah yeah and uh, she is a remarkable uh, lady uh, her, yeah. her life history is, is quite remarkable yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so i mean uh, i think the bethun college actually has a very illustrious uh, alumni so alumni okay uh, okay so for example there are someone called kadambini ganguly who was mm-hmm. doctor i think first lady doctor of western oh, wow. from bengal yes yes there is uh, actually a very famous story also about her right there is a lot of in, uh, books yeah. written exactly on, on her. exactly yeah, yeah. so uh, there are other priyambada bakchi uh, uh, she was a social worker also distinguish uh, kind of literature uh, person and uh, so there are many uh, during that time uh, before our uh, independence wonderful, so wonderful uh, so bethun college is probably i should say that uh, i mean uh, i have uh, some influence uh, uh, from that time already because i studied i spent 3 years there uh, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. my bachelor degree uh, and then i moved to uh, rajabaja science college where i did uh, masters in applied mathematics so again uh, applied mathematics okay yeah. great so this is also i must say this also has a very uh, strong uh, influence in at least in science because uh, uh, so previously it was called mixed mathematics department 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, two of the famous people whom we know are from there. One is Satyendranath Bose. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, another is uh, Meghnath Shah, right? So if I'm not wrong. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay, they are so, two two stalwarts of Indian science, yeah. Indian uh, okay, physics. So they both are, uh, have the degree of mixed mathematics. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so how, then, how was your experience uh, in that college? Uh, like, uh, what is your memory uh, of of uh, studying in that college? Uh, you mean the master the degree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one thing uh, uh, I can uh, tell you that uh, uh, when I, uh, okay, so first thing is that uh, if you in mathematics uh, uh, honors in our time, uh, if you study in Calcutta University, then first 40 people usually get a chance to do the applied mathematics. Oh, and okay. the, uh, and the rest, I think hundred that time that was a seat, they get pure mathematics. Mm-hmm. So uh, in that sense, I managed to go to applied mathematics. Applied so I mathematics. was among them. And uh, uh, so one particular event that I remember that uh, I entered the corridor of the applied mathematics unit, and the first notice board uh, showed uh, two. Uh, I mean, mark sheets of uh, mark sheets of two alumni. One is okay. Tendonath Bose, another is Meghnad Shah. Meghnad Shah, wow. So, <laughs> now that is the uh, st- benchmark. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, they have, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I think that was kind of record marks uh, uh, in, uh, I mean, even. In our time, I I think no one has uh, able to, you know, uh, beat that marks. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, now I don't know the status. So uh, maybe... But do do you think uh, uh, that aspect and the emphasis of marks is good in education generally? What do you you think about it? Okay. Uh, so uh, I think I agree with you that uh, marks should not be emphasized. This probably doesn't have any correlation with the grasp that you have on the subject that you are studying. However, uh, in their case, I think it's uh, it is actually showing that I mean <laughs> the the control that they have on the subjects that they have studied is enormous or that's a huge gap between the normal people and us i mean normal people like us and them probably so that was kind of uh, for a msc students who are starting their msc this was a, a kind of motivation so i must say that i was not really very uh, uh, kind of i i now i cannot recall the numbers that they have i remember that that was good but only thing what I remember that I am getting an opportunity to study in a place where these people have studied. That motivated me uh, something. So in some sense, you also have said that, uh, I mean, why I started doing science as my career, okay? So if I say that, okay, first thing is that my mother was a mathematics teacher and so I started uh, from that point, I got interested in mathematics, okay? And uh, I was thinking that I was, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm always uh, getting a very good marks in mathematics classes in schools, but I was probably one of the top uh, scorer. On the other hand, other subject, I was not doing that well because I was just concentrating on mathematics more. But at least I had that kind of knack that, uh, you know, uh, if someone gives me uh, some kind of tricky mathematics, I would like to solve. At least I would like to address that, okay, whether I can solve or not. Okay. It's not that I will escape. I will try one or two days, try, try, then we'll go to a teacher and so on. So that kind of thing was there that other students were giving me some mathematics questions, which 
I was trying to solve. Solve it. Okay. So all throughout your career, uh, especially during your BSc and MSc days, you still were doing some physics, right? You had some f- form physics. Uh, yeah, in physics, of course, in case of BSc, I have to do also lab because yeah, BSc yeah. physics was my kind of past subject. So I mm-hmm. have done lab. In case of applied mathematics, which is kind of mixture of mathematics and physics. Physics, you're right. I should yeah. say. And that's probably the starting point because in the second year, I have to choose special paper. And I had quantum mechanics as special paper and statistical mechanics as the optional. Very nice. Very nice. So I haven't done any laboratory. That still, actually, I feel that I still should do. And I'm planning to do it in in my now HRI because we have now lab for MSc. I have yeah, visited, yeah. but I haven't done properly. I wanted Wonderful. to do. Okay. Yeah, for, for the listeners, HRI is Harish Chandra Research Institute, where Aditi works. And uh, that yeah. is one of the very okay, famous so, institutions yeah, I, in India. Yeah, yeah I, I, I haven't mentioned that. Yeah, yeah so uh, Aditi, yeah, so, it, one of the aspects which I would want to ask you is, uh, uh, in terms of the research, you had a very good training in mathematics. And uh, that training, how has it really helped you uh, going going uh, further as a researcher? Uh, yes, it has helped because, uh, for example, I did my PhD from Poland. Yes, yes. And you know, Poland is very strong in mathematics. And uh, so we know, for example, Mana. Uh, hmm. is from Poland and there are many mathematicians and in general uh, it has a kind of East Europe has a culture of having a good mathematicians and kind of they have the culture so they are in general their mathematics training is much ahead of the normal other uh, you know other countries absolutely so in absolutely. that sense when I was doing my PhD I found that it was much easier to talk uh, sometimes uh, it was it was it was helpful for I have a tendency for example to do some analytical calculations pages after pages because I probably have the training with yeah this. that's that's a very important skill to have as a theoretical physicist yeah. also yeah. so yeah then, yeah, then go ahead and just tell us about your true. PhD so, experience that uh, would have been a, in, in a very good transition for you I, right Mm-hmm. still can do some calculations which are i'm not afraid of at least doing these calculations which have been so maybe that's a kind yeah. of helpful uh, uh, since i have mathematics training so this is more or less my childhood kind of uh, how nice. the journey starts journey uh, starts okay okay but in terms of your your phd then how, how did it evolve like uh, yeah, how was so your transition yeah, so I did, uh, so I already um, somehow when I was after my master's uh, with some students and postdocs that time because uh, I, my I work on some subjects called quantum information and computation and that subject kind of starting, I mean, mm-hmm. developing from end of, uh, you know, last century. So, and around 2000 and so, okay. So, in that sense, uh, with my after my master's, I somehow got interested with this subject. But that time, only some few students and postdocs. Now they are all faculty, of course. But that time, they were just starting PhD or senior PhD students. They were kind of telling about this subject. I started learning. And then I apply abroad and I went abroad. And I got a... So this, this is also kind of, maybe I must say that uh, uh, typically people go to US, UK, other places for doing PhD. So since I have already started learning this subject, I uh, so one of the kind of that time, one of the famous groups which are working on quantum information was the Horodech kids. So okay. I think whoever have done some work on our subject, they are aware of Horodech kids because kind of the development of a theory of entanglement, mm-hmm. these people played a kind of uh, very important role. Important role. Okay. Okay. And uh, so they are now, uh, they have written these reviews of modern physics in 2009 
on theory of entanglement, which is one of the uh, probably cited uh, article in the theory of entanglement. So since I started working already from Kolkata after my master's, so mm-hmm. I came to know about their name. I wrote to them and they gave me the opportunity to go there to work. Wonderful. So that's, uh, that's why I have, uh, I went there, I realized, uh, or I started enjoying working with them, along with my supervisor, Marek Jukowski, who is who was also kind of uh, pioneer in Bell Inequality Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, Quantum Optics. And I gave the interview and I was able to kind of... So did you have interview. Skype and all then? Or how did no, you... No, no, no. I went there. They first actually invited me to check uh, for three months. And oh, okay. I have to give an interview there. Okay. And I passed. Uh, and so they gave me the fellowship. So uh, but during that time, there was just European Union is starting because it's 2001. Wow. And okay. so, uh, so the point is that they have, although some European Union kind of fellowship, Horodetskis have. So now actually people go in Europe to have the, their, uh, the fellowships from the project. That time it was not so common. common. So I have to pass this interview because I was getting fellowship from the university, which typically Polish students get. So probably myself and Ujwal, who were both were there, Ujwal Sen, uh, he is a faculty also in the, at HRI, as you were aware. So we probably were almost uh, probably first two, or I am not sure, but at least among the first few people who got fellowship from the actually government, Polish government, the PhD fellowship. Yeah, I, I should mention to the listeners that Ujwal uh, is also married to Aditi. <laughs> so, and they are two of the top-notch physicists who have been working on quantum information and uh, various different aspects of uh, quantum technology. Uh, so, interestingly, Aditi, you did not tell about uh, the fact that you also were uh, probably married during that time already. Huh? Yeah. And uh, yeah. that, uh, so you, you were already married and then you went to, uh, uh, to Poland. Poland. How was it? Yes, yes, yes. So, we were married just after our MSc. Okay. And then we went to. Initially, Ujjal went to Italy. I was in Poland. Uh-huh. Then Ujjal moved to Poland. And Wonderful. we finally did PhD there. And after my PhD, I got the Humboldt, Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship. Yes. From yes. this. Uh, and I moved to Hanover. Uh, so, University of Hanover, which now called Leibniz University. Uh, uh, so, I was in Hanover with Professor Marcek Levenstein. Marcek Levenstein. And then Maciek actually moved to ICFO, uh, the Institute of Photonic Sciences, where you were also part of it. Yes. And yes. Uh, then we moved for a postdoc uh, in, at ICFO. And I was there for two years. After that, I got a Ramanika Hall Fellowship, Fellowship which yes. is a yes. kind of tenure track position, position. From, yeah. from the Spanish government. And I was there for two years. Then I left and come back. I I still vividly remember uh, Aditi, uh, especially on the last day when you people were uh, kind of leaving ICFO, there was a a big celebration in the main hall and it was one of the wonderful moments, you know, you could see that the whole institution was there, you know, to to send you people off and uh, it it was such a great gesture and uh, ICFO is something, you know, uh, it is. It has a very strong kind of uh, bonds with all of us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, yeah. I too enjoyed my time when I was a postdoc there. And, uh, exactly. Wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we also enjoyed. So actually, from the almost when we joined ICFO 2005 uh, February, and uh, till 2008. So this four years we were there. Yeah. And it was kind of. Uh, Evolution for ICFO because ICFO, absolutely. ICFO was initially in a small building, which is kind of part of uh, University of uh, this Catalonia, Catalonia yes. and then yeah, and then it moved to their own building, which was also kind of the current buildings uh, one fourth of the current building. Current building. So, <laughs> yes. uh, so this yes. was kind of we went to see the new ICFO. 
and so on. So it was very nice that we were from the kind of also the beginning of the journey of ICFO. I mean, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the other thing is uh, you, you have worked with some of the pioneers in quantum information, quantum teleportation. How was your experience? Like, uh, you know, uh, did you also see a lot of w- women uh, scientists during that time? Because you were kind of very well known in, in that particular area, even as a postdoc. Because I very well remember Machek had his very nice group and you were one of the central person in the group who was leading a lot of efforts. Would you want to tell how was the ecosystem then? What really encouraged people? Of course, Machek himself was a great scientist and he's still, still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, true. Yeah. No, the, it's not actually. So during my PhD, I think in, in the Marek Jakovsky group, I was the only woman. Okay. In case also, also I was working with Horodechkis continuously. Also, I was the only. So in Gdansk, I mean, hardly in the QIC group, we have any anyone, uh, anyone there. On the other hand, when I moved to Machik Levenstein's group, there we have few women. Few women. So okay. I think Dagma, I was able to work with uh, two kind of famous women scientists in quantum information. One is Dagma Bruce, who is now in University of Dusseldorf. And another is Professor Anna Sanpera. Uh, she is now the also in the University Autonoma Barcelona. So these two are kind of very famous in the in quantum information and computation. Actually, their advice, their help, even as a faculty, when I am here, whenever I meet, whenever I have sent the email to them, mm-hmm. their advice actually helped me a lot to shape my career, career. Uh, as a as a faculty, as a senior scientist or something. So wonderful, wonderful. Uh, that was really inspiration. There, there. I mean, I really worked or stayed five years very closely with these two ladies, ladies. I mean, Anna Sanpeda okay. and Machik, uh, Anna Sanpeda and the Dagmar, so Dagmar Bruce. So really, they have. I mean, we have a lot of discussion and so on. So that helped me a lot. Wonderful, That's wonderful. Yeah. So now that you are now uh, taking a transition from a postdoc, of course, you also had. Uh, uh, kind of tenure track position in in Barcelona. But what motivated you to come back to India, Aditi? Yeah, so yeah, I actually wanted to come back uh, India from the beginning. Yes, yes, uh, you, you are so, always telling that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, it's true that many of them they are not surprised even when uh, uh, we both actually it's difficult, but. Ujjal and I both got this Ramanika Hal, which has a possibility to become a permanent position, position in yes. Spain. Okay. Even then, we decided to come back. That was, uh, some people get surprised, but I know that who are close to me, like Machek, mm-hmm. uh, it was not surprising because it was very clear that we want to come back. Okay. So, Yeah. Yes, and so uh, uh, this was uh, okay. So I am a you know theoretical physicist, and uh, I always feel uh, you know uh, when I am working in my own country, many things, many views. I can tell because I can tell that this is. I mean, I get confident to express my views. In India, India than in uh, in uh, somewhere outside India. Yes, yes. Uh, I must say that uh, I got many things from Europe. I mean, yes, yes. Uh, so many. Uh, so after coming back to India, I probably failed in getting some of the fellowships, but I never failed in Europe. So, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, that that's actually the truth, uh, because uh, I don't know whatever whatever fellowship, whether it's a travel grant, whether it's a big grant, whether it's a tenure track position, everything we applied in Europe, we got it. So that's, that's I, nice. uh, I mean, that was even we are Indian. But that time, you know, only very few Indians were working in that, uh, you know, in Europe even in other subjects also. So even then we were able to manage all the things. 
which was not true when I came back in India. I understood. I, I actually I failed many things, which upset. I mean, different reasons I got upset. But even then, I feel that I when I am talking with students, when I am talking with faculties, when I am kind of telling or criticizing the policies, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. of whether institutes, whether in a nation or something, I feel that that I have that right to tell, which that confidence I did not have when I was in abroad. So Absolutely. this is one of the reason I wanted to come back. Because here I feel that, okay, I have grown up. I want that. And also another thing, I went to Europe just because I want to get some exposure, some experience. I really want to come back and, uh, I mean, kind of teach students whatever I have learned. Or then I want, uh, whatever I learned, I want to also expand. I know how to really learn new things. I'm wonderful sorry. so wonderful uh, this is the reason i want to come back so now now around 2008 you make the transition right you come back yes, to india yes. yeah, yeah 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 and, december yeah. yeah and then yeah. you 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 come to delhi right that's the yes, yes. yeah would you want to describe your experience there <laughs> yeah actually my it was a very tough decision for yeah. me uh, to change the place okay uh, again, Anna, JNU was that time the dean of the physical sciences department was Rupa Manjari, Professor Rupa Manjari Ghosh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she helped me a lot as a how one should behave as a faculty, as a junior faculty. Uh, she has given a lot of advices, which also helped me a lot to shape as a faculty. And even now, she if I ask something, she always helped me. So... I think, and that time, the physical science, SPA, School of Physical Sciences in JNU, I mean, have a very strong people there, okay? And uh, so I actually enjoy talking with them. Okay. And uh, it is really very good. Uh, But I wanted to change uh, for uh, one very small reason. But maybe my dream uh, for that reasons I change, because um, in 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 case of HRI, I found that uh, because I worked with uh, say Maciek Levenstein, I worked with uh, Marek Jukowski or Horodetsky. Always there was a group of students, postdocs who were working there. Yeah. And in Europe there is kind of T structure, like first the principal and or the kind of the faculty or the professor after that some postdocs are working senior postdocs then junior and then phds then masters and so on so kind of you know uh, it's much like a pyramid pyramid okay, okay. Uh, although there is no hierarchy but the the flow of knowledge or the project handling are like that okay and i really enjoy working in this group collaborative way because i think now the science is going towards that, that you really need more collaboration to have really a very fruitful uh, science. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Exchange of knowledge is now very important if you want to expand. And this I really enjoy. And I don't think that always this expansion of knowledge only go towards, you know, faculty to postdocs and the uh, PhD and the masters. I think that the opposite flow is also uh, is important so i learned many things in last 14 years as a faculty from my students actually i I always say i mean i have learned enormous things because they have contributed uh, towards my uh, increasing my understanding enormously so this is my kind of dream to make a group which actually at Harish Chandra Research Institute, it was it is the structurally or the government fundings are such that it is much easier. Easier, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, because they we, that's the reason I moved. So it was very tough decision for us to move from Delhi to Allahabad. Allahabad. But we did. <laughs> no, this so is my experience. This is trending. this is wonderfully put uh, because I I too subscribe to the point that uh, this learning. Uh, happens uh, not in only one particular way. Uh, in fact, the, yeah. in my own podcast, I have been actually mentioning this exclusively 
that the learning can can happen from either channels students actually yeah. are a great source exactly. of knowledge and oh, especially that's... during research uh, as we have uh, found out many a times i absolutely yeah. uh, agree with you i absolutely agree with yeah. you yeah yeah and now it's yeah. very nicely put because you know you are also a person who has built huge group you know that is a, a theoretical physics group with such a broad uh, emphasis on quantum information and also a, a quantum uh, a technologies also to certain extent of late what yeah, i have been yeah. seeing that is there is a fascinating kind of a transition also uh, and uh, uh, how how has your experience been in building that particular group and uh, could you want to tell a little bit more about your group yeah so okay so uh, as you already said in your um, already maybe i tell about the subject a bit then it will be easier yes, for me to yes. explain how absolutely explain i'm 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 coming to that okay. yeah yeah so yeah. then yeah. we we going to then jump into the aspect of your research okay uh, yeah. where i am very uh, keen in understanding your current research interests and some of the wonderful work which is coming from your group uh, would you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, your your uh, current research interests especially related yeah. to quantum quantum stuff what you're doing yeah okay so as we know that i mean you know the uh, so as you already said about quantum technologies okay so uh, so the idea is to build technologies which are i mean which kind of quantum version of the technologies okay yeah. so the technologies that we are using say computer laptop internet for communication purpose or other machineries we know they are very good and we are happy but at the same time uh, it was kind of realized that if you build the best on the quantum principles then they will be they will give you more efficiency or give some performance which you cannot achieve via classical computer or classical technologies i call classical because the technologies that we use based on the principles of classical mechanics classical electrodynamics electronics or uh, classical information theory and so on so that's why i called word classical on the other hand our aim is to build technologies which are kind of uh, which will be based on quantum mechanics quantum mechanical principle and so the quantum version of information theory and so on okay so this is if i say that this is the broad uh, broad yeah. Uh, yeah so there are many verticals like one wants to build quantum version of the computer which can solve certain problems which we cannot be solve in a classical computer like uh, factorizing uh, integers into its their prime factors now uh, the interesting part this computation has some that we want to build a very efficient quantum computer that's also has consequence on quantum communication especially with security like quantum cryptography so we also need to build quantum version of it and then there are other technologies like sensors we want the quantum versions that can give some advantages which we cannot achieve by classical sensors then we also have like a small uh, say the storage devices like batteries can have refrigerators can have other technologies that you can build okay so and uh, each of them uh, these are the theoretical way if you can think but each of them also has some physical systems where one can implement them okay. like uh, quantum communication we know that if we can build a photonic uh, by using photons then they will be more efficient and uh, uh, that can be understood also because uh, you know photons don't interact with each other very easily and so when it travels then uh, there will be less decoherence okay? okay okay on the other hand when we want to build computer or the quantum computer then probably it's coming up that superconducting qubits or trapped ions can be good candidate or potential candidate photons are also nowadays this is also coming up so there are also possibilities of a hybrid quantum computer and so on 
Similarly, if you want to prepare or build sensors, there are other physical systems that are can be useful. Okay, like uh, trapped ions, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, envy center or something that can be useful. So each of the technologies, uh, there are importance to build theoretically and to show that they give a quantum advantage. At the same time, since we want to realize these uh, technologies by using some physical systems like trapped ions, NMRs, NV centers, photons, superconducting qubits, we also should understand those physical systems and each of them has some difficulty, some decurrence effect when you really build. So now people are also working that how, you know, uh, how to overcome those uh, noises uh, and get the efficiencies, which is better than classical. So I think overall, this is probably the yeah. very uh, naive way to tell how the works are going on. No, no, this is, the, the, it also is, you know, uh, very broad in, 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 in kind of implications. And uh, yeah. one of the aspects you, you did mention about is uh, utilizing various different systems uh, to, exactly. to come up with uh, these things. But it also has a very strong theoretical machine, right? That is something mm-hmm. which drives mm-hmm. this whole field very effectively. Yeah. Uh, be it, exactly. let's say, from uh, algorithms which are necessary to run such things. Mm-hmm. I'm also very curious to know about this quantum batteries. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? What do you mean by yeah. quantum batteries? <laughs> yeah, so the batteries are to store uh, energy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, in in our classical batteries that we use, where we transfer classical and uh, chemical energy to electrical, okay. And the point is, when you charge the battery after that, so there is a storage time of the energy, and then there is a kind of discharging when we use this battery. Absolutely. So there are charging and discharging. Okay. Just like a capacitor. Now want, yeah. Now we want to see that if I built uh, these batteries, where again I want to store energy, so that means in some sense uh, you are in the say ground state, you put the system into the excited state so that you have some storage of energy. And then you just want to see that which quantum systems are good where you can easily charge and discharge. Okay. So you can uh, store energy easily. At the same time, you can extract energy easily. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now the point is that, of course, you want to find out those physical systems which are good for this as well as they are robust against decoherence. Okay. So it's very hard uh, to uh, to kind of find out systems where you can store energy yeah, and uh, yeah so it's important to find out a physical system which are which can store energy as well as we can discharge energy from it quickly at the same time they should be robust against decoherence okay or okay. any imperfections so we are looking for such physical systems and in our work, we try to model it with the spin models, which you can realize by trapped ions or cold atoms in optical lattices. And we show that they are uh, robust against uh, decoherence. And decoherence, so. yeah. 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 So, see, one of the aspects, some of the uh, listeners might not even know many things about the quantum information processing and other things. But, uh, you know, one is always intrigued by the necessity of going from classical systems to quantum systems. Uh, Do you want to just uh, tell us a couple of uh, words about that in the sense uh, why that transition might be necessary or uh, what is the so-called supremacy? That is something which I don't subscribe to. (laughs) There's something called as quantum supremacy, uh, which is a little bit of kind of controversial. Uh, But you may want to just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so one thing is that, uh, okay, probably we understand, we may, I mean, at least we, 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 I mean, if we study quantum mechanics, we understand one difference is that with a classical world is that in classical world, all the things are distinguishable, okay? Yes, yes. On the other hand, in quantum world, there are some things which are indistinguishable, 
there are states, there are physical systems which are indistinguishable. And that is because of the something which we call superposition principle, right? So we can think that uh, very naively saying that uh, in a classical world, we can see a dead cat. Mm -hmm. We can see also the live cat. But in a quantum world, you actually can see together alive plus dead cat. Right. That Schrodinger's cat. Right. Exactly. So yeah. this is probably the first thing that we learn in quantum mechanics. And this actually gives the power to get anything which we call quantum supremacy. Superposition. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, supremacy in some sense already you can see that somehow your space is getting increased, right? Because increased. of this superposition. And so we expect some more power. And this is indeed the case because we Absolutely. find out that suppose I want to find out the prime factors of an integer like 45, like 86, like 72, 156 and so on. And I want to know mm-hmm. what are the prime factors of it. Mm-hmm. And in case of 45, it is five and two threes. In case of 72, we can find those twos in threes in terms and so on. Now, these are easy, but now if I go on increasing, say I give you a 40-digit number and ask you that what are the prime factors, it will be hard. And in a, we have to write a program, and in a classical computer, most efficient program can take some time. Now, if okay. you make it 40 to 100, it takes some years. If you make it 200, then it takes almost the age of the universe. Universe. Okay. This is in the classical system, you might assume. Yeah, in a classical yeah. system. Now the breakthrough result came up by Peter Shore in 94, where he showed that, okay, you can solve this program in a quantum mechanical world. If you use quantum mechanical uh, principles like superposition principle, then you can solve this problem in a polynomial time, which you can call reasonable time. Okay. So that is quite unreasonable. If I give you a 100-digit number and you tell me that, uh, okay, I will take, uh, I will come back to you with the prime factors uh, after one and a half year. I mean, this is not a reasonable way to handle. But on the other hand, I can tell, okay, I will give you the answer within an hour or so. Hour, okay. so, so that's a really, I mean, hour, I'm just The speed up is the big advantage. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, uh, I should say that, Usually I tell this as a reasonable and unreasonable. And uh, mathematically speaking, polynomial or exponential okay, yeah, yeah. time. Okay, So this Wonderful. is a kind of supremacy or whatever you call. So speed up. Okay, I say that yeah. this is a jump, right? Polynomial means we are doing something order of n, n square and so on. Exponential means e to the power exponential n and so on. So, of course, this is a kind of exponential speed up you expect. Now, whether you call it supremacy or not, that's up to the... That's a, <laughs> that's a matter of debate. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, nevertheless, you know, as a, as a student of physics, when I first kind of got exposed to quantum mechanics, right from the concept of tunneling and all those things, it is... Uh, any any student who is ex- getting exposed to quantum mechanics for the first time gets really fascinated. You know, that yes, is something yeah. which is True. tremendously True. enriching. You know, your worldview yeah. really yeah. kind of changes yeah, completely. Yeah. Uh, this is also another point which I haven't mentioned that building quantum technology also have a very good side effects because you also realize several quantum mechanical principles like postulates from states to measurements to unitary dynamics and uh, other things much more uh, in a from a different perspective perspective which probably even when there was only when we are reading quantum mechanics books uh, we just learned the postulates but whenever you can see that you can do this to do something better it's much easier to convince people the power of quantum mechanics. Okay? Absolutely. And Absolutely. over the time, it also, I mean, we kind of realize that also, I mean, you know, we are able to understand quantum mechanics from a different perspective, sometimes in a better way. This is kind of what I say, kind of side effects or good effects 
of yes. building quantum technologies technology yeah because the quantum computation is one of the bigger kind of agenda yeah, yeah. there is also a lot of uh, uh, work yeah, yeah, on quantum materials exactly yeah. so i i actually agree in that sense that i mean just emphasizing of quantum computer is not the only issue the issue, issue is right. parallelly we are able to build other quantum technologies and also we are able to understand some quantum mechanical laws and quantum mechanical possibilities in a different way that may give rise to a new things which maybe we are not able to see even today exactly even totally unanticipated aspects yeah. of it so maybe Absolutely. doing this we realize over time that okay this parts has not been explored that can give us some power okay fascinating fascinating it's a, this is this is really you know set the whole kind of uh, arena mm-hmm. for for various different interesting questions and there's also a lot of work going on within india by the way uh, uh, w- there's quite a lot of impetus for uh, yeah, quantum yeah, technologies yeah. and other yeah, things exactly. uh, it's also very curious because uh, there is also quite a bit of criticism in the sense some particular quarters is also looking at this aspect of quantum technologies although might be very beneficial especially when it comes to quantum computation there is also a bit of debate which is going on what is your thought on that yeah i mean debate in which sense you were saying now for example the uh, aspect of computational kind of capabilities uh, would it really be able to offer something within a very short period of time or there should be a reasonably long period of kind of investment both in terms of knowledge and in terms of the funding which is necessary for for this to happen okay in my uh, thing that really the source algorithm that i have just discussed i mean not discussed but i just stated rather the yeah. if you really want to get the benefit which actually has some you know implications in cryptography uh so uh, that only comes in play only when we have a quantum computer right quantum yes, and uh, uh, probably it is not clear i mean at least my understanding you can uh, now probably easily build up to 100 qubit and 150 qubit but making it 1000 i think really we need a jump we need a jump yes yeah. and so probably it will take some time this is my understanding Absolutely. it will not be tested tomorrow there will be 1000 qubit thing it will be difficult uh, uh, because it requires something to be kept like coherence kind of thing some quantum property exactly the superposition kind of thing should be Absolutely. kept for a longer period so i think uh, then only the decoherence effect will be done so could be making computer we can say that okay i have a 1000 qubit quantum computer but really it can give us something we can solve schroeder's algorithm with us uh, with the time that was theoretically predicted there will be no ro- noise i mean it is, whether it will be robust against noise or not it's not i mean it requires time wonderful wonderful this is fascinating so uh, this effort is also kind of you know uh, multifaceted in nature Mm-hmm. because you need experiments and very strong theoretical uh, underpinning behind this subject so i i i uh, know that you also work very closely with experimentalists you know that is one of the hallmarks of physics where you have this juggle exactly. between you know experiments yeah. and theoreticians what has uh, your experience uh, of working in that kind of environment uh, please please tell us a little bit about it um yeah actually i mean um in case of uh, india i think i mean maybe last 10 15 years the also you are an experimentalist i know so <laughs> i think the overall uh, picture have changed quite a bit okay compared yeah. to yeah. maybe when we were students or postdocs or something and uh, i think the the development is quite uh, quite a bit and as you have said that uh, the good part of quantum information of course the big agenda is to build quantum computer but as even parallelly one can build small quantum technology one can do some uh, really a good experiments to test something basic on quantum mechanics and so on so that i think india uh, also there are several groups are trying and that is really amazing 
Okay. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. And that really, Absolutely. I really uh, kind of enjoy that you feel that you do something, you propose something theoretically, then people are interested to talk and work because there are possibilities. Not everybody is working on quantum computer, quantum algorithms and so on. This is one aspect. Parallelly, people are trying also to uh, do certain things. Even many algorithms also, we don't know whether that can give us a quantum advantage or not. Okay, not, so that yeah, even that people are trying. So I think fascinating. that's that's, that's uh, fascinating. That's fascinating. Nice so uh, the other aspect is that uh, within HRI, your group runs this young quantum, which is yeah. a very kind of you know uh, very famous and also very well known meeting uh do you want to tell a little bit about uh that meeting it's a it's something which a lot of people should know about yeah yeah well that's a very nice question i haven't expected <laughs> thank you <laughs> actually um you know when i was a phd student there yeah. are something like young uh people who are doing quantum information there was some meet called iking informal mm-hmm. quantum information meeting which was gathering actually this was held in uh, that time, I, I think in 2002, it was held in Imperial College. And I was part of that. Oh, okay. wonderful. Okay. And I was uh, one of the speakers of this. And there were, even there, there were very few women. I am not sure. One of the organizers were, were women, or maybe two of mm-hmm. the organizers were women. But uh, if I look at the speakers list, that was very few. I even do, do, do not remember, which is surely not... Uh, more than one digit but there are 50 60 talks but very few women that's true that's a different aspect that we can come later but the point is that i really enjoy because you know the usually in a conference the big speakers are speaking and the students and postdocs are sitting and they sometimes ask questions they sometimes discuss but it also depends that where are you from what are the exposure Mm -hmm. And whether you are comfortable to ask questions and so on, because you are hesitant to ask questions. On the other hand, if there is something which we, that's why we started, because Young Quantum is only for PhDs and postdocs to give talks. So they are the speakers, they are the organizers. So actually QIC group at HRI, they are the organizers, the PhD students and postdocs. Uh, sometimes we ask some uh, eminent scientists for give a talk, a uh, special talk, but not always. And uh, the whole time PhDs and postdocs are giving uh, talks. And in that scenario, we have seen that, uh, I mean, the PhDs are not hesitant or postdocs, even the master's students are not hesitant to ask questions because they're asking questions to contemporaries. They get the idea and at the same time, they're discussing, they even during talk. So this is much more meeting where they feel comfortable to talk, discuss. In that way, also you learn a lot. You get a chance to get a platform to talk because usually even in a, you, it's important to give a talk in front of say 100 people. How will you Absolutely. present? How will you answer? This is a part of PhD or in your postdoc or development as a faculty or i mean even today we learn right from our absolutely topic. absolutely so i think for phd time this is a this we thought uh, to start and we started and many people oh. apply so we are overwhelmed with the response yeah yeah this is years. it's one of the very popular meetings on quantum uh, kind of related yeah. issues yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of uh, students are very kind of excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. We get very good applications due to accommodation, etc. Due to logistics, we have to restrict to very few people. But Mm -hmm. uh, last February, we have one and it was really enjoyable. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Now that uh, we have been discussing about your research, we'll make a transition a little bit, okay, to even slightly more broader aspect of your life. And the, one of the important aspects, Aditi, is that you are a, a cutting edge researcher, but you also are a mother, you know, a mother to a wonderful uh, daughter, uh, Shanj. Uh, and uh, we, we know her also as Anu. <laughs> uh-huh. and, uh, that is something which we, 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 uh, we came across when uh, she was very young. And uh, would you want to tell the, the aspect of being a cutting edge scientist and uh, 
a woman physicist doing cutting edge work especially in india uh, please tell us a little bit more about that uh, what is what has been your experience yeah okay so i must say that okay it's true that the numbers are very small there are yeah. many social issues uh, that uh, i realize when I, even i was doing i was studying and so on so it's true that i am from the family where i, I am the only uh, kid i was the only daughter or only daughter, yeah. uh, you know uh, their child so i never had any discrimination that mm. if i want to go to study somewhere they have never said that you were not uh, allowed to do that and so on at the same time uh, there are i know that there are families where there are some constraints of money then they usually put the money for their son not for the daughter this is one uh, discrimination that yes. i have heard and this is true at the same time even when i have no issue but there are also other issues in india which actually also stop like due to security etc i cannot go to listen say some talk which is far away from my home and mm-hmm. i have to come back home at late night for example late night yes okay yeah. so these also give me a less exposure so in that sense these are the kind of uh, uh, problems that uh, young students are facing which typically our boys are not facing okay. facing yeah uh, this is one part that i want to say second thing i think also there are uh, the, also women have to be a bit more you know a, a, a typical male students how they behave or how they are uh, even at home or in 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 their colleges or universities how they behave so there can be a people who can be silent or something it's fine but in case of female you have to be even when required you have to raise your voice to voice. establish that you want that even in your family that i really want to pursue this and for that i really don't want to now go for marriage for example mm-hmm. yeah. so i am yeah. not saying to be impolite i'm saying to be uh, uh politely you have to put your uh, demand or your wish in a strong ground and then you fight for it so nothing come in a even in any i mean whether you are doing science or anything you have to fight to get some right so i think that some people may in i mean in my surroundings i have seen people uh, living things easily instead of they could have put a bit more effort to say there can be some argument which may not you require or which you do not want but sometimes it is required because it can happen that maybe at the some time your parents are not realizing that this can give you something maybe one year later they may realize that aha i should have asked you to pursue but now the time has gone it's very hard to come back come okay. back yeah so yeah. this is one thing that i realize uh, that women also should have to fight to get the right so this is absolutely uh, absolutely regret. i think time management is also very important uh, mm-hmm. in your case so uh, as a women i mean i think so sometimes some of my friends including ujjal used to tell me that uh, suppose i am doing something uh, something not related to science immediately i can make the transition uh, for if someone asks something questions or some students call me i immediately sit and can do science so uh, so i i i usually uh, tell that this is for survival because mm-hmm. if i want to survive if i have to survive as a faculty <laughs> so i okay. also have to do that okay yeah and i cannot tell because i am a, i have to compete with other people other colleagues and so on for or have to you know have to be competent enough so i cannot always say that because of women i cannot do that so sometimes you also have to take some challenges and i'm sure that for women you have to take more challenges but that you should do i mean one should do otherwise you will never be able to achieve so this is my where do you 
where do you get that strength aditi <laughs> no it's just coming wonderful no, I, i think it's just okay i must say that my support from uh, from my family is i mean i don't know i i must say that i always say i mean the name uh, shaj contribution uh, towards uh, where where i am sitting today is enormous uh, okay so i mean i cannot tell i mean i cannot demand anything more than uh, anything more from her because you know she has uh, uh, she has to sit when she was i don't know maybe two years two and a half years old to a colloquium where she has no idea what is going on mm-hmm. and she she was there silently sitting looking at something doing in some pages in many conferences you have seen now she is much grown up she can just uh, take the book and uh, went to some i mean went to a conference and sitting outside because now she is old so i can uh, i have to i can i mean keep her alone uh, yeah, but yeah. she was uh, sitting she never demanded any time actually if i asked that should i sit uh, with you uh, be, or i feel that okay i cannot sit because uh, she needs something to do uh, mostly uh, not any study related thing something supw so something to prepare or something whether uh, she usually asks can you give me some time and then i ask mm-hmm. yes i can and uh, maybe at last point something comes up and i and ujjal have to say oh we have to go we forgot and i cannot do can you manage and she also yeah yeah you go ahead don't worry i will manage wow okay. wonderful so i think her uh, i mean i always tell everyone that uh, i don't know uh, she is in class 10 i hope uh, she will find her way where how she evolves and things in education but if i look at my or even ujjal's career her contribution is is enormous how enormous. she behaved this is really amazing uh, as a but i think this is how even the kids realize so this is not so i think if you can uh, train kids in that way also it's possible so i'm possible. not saying yeah. that it's exceptional scenario i am sure there are many kids are doing that and that's why Absolutely. we are still existing <laughs> doing no also it, it it is a it is to do with the mindset uh, yeah. for example yeah, exactly. uh, it's not only about uh, the the environment in which you are outside but also within the family uh, yeah. the support yeah. i know yeah. your your parents have also been very supportive exactly and uh, exactly. i i could see even in the in the past i've i've seen that they have been very uh, encouraging and other things yeah that exactly. is something which is extremely no, no, that uh, that i must say i mean in my case my family support uh, ujjal is anyway with me so he is yeah, always yeah. supporting but yeah, at absolutely. the same time but even uh, i must say that ujjal always i can travel very easily Uh, i do not have to tell anything he never says no no you cannot go uh, okay even during exam of shaj uh, i have to go to somewhere and mm-hmm. uh, he has stayed managed prepared tiffin give her yeah. when she was kid now uh, shaj can manage many thing which uh, is a happy situation mm-hmm. so for example now shaj went with ujjal somewhere where tomorrow mm-hmm. ujjal has to uh, stay in a some selection committee meeting just she went because she wants a break from the study so nice you know. nice so this is uh, how she finds her holiday holidays uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah wonderful so is, wonderful uh, in fact that may also you know influence having a strong mother is very important strong not only in terms of you know uh, the position but also a person who really gives emphasis to career and other things and this is something you know even in my family we we talk about yeah. keju and i think that's people. important so yeah. for example yeah. one quote i usually i can give you i can tell that what i tell shanj i say that uh, i mean maybe a bit uh, you know a bit strong and so on but uh, it's uh, i usually tell shanj that you do not have any option okay Mm-hmm. to stay at home after your education is completed you have to do something okay nice 
because I think there is no option that you feel that you will not do anything. And I also think that if every woman thinks this is also kind of their social responsibility because uh, somehow the society as well as uh, other sources are uh, giving us so much time. If you think about from your teacher's perspective in college or wherever you study, you also have a responsibility to return it back. Your Absolutely. Uh, whatever Absolutely. you learn. So I think if maybe many women, if they think in this way, they may. But they also require a lot of supports from others that I agree. That Absolutely. most of the people, I am kind of, I, I got it. So I can maybe tell such a statement. Many people don't get. So yes, Absolutely. They can Absolutely. make this. No, that's, that's something very important. You know, you really emphasized. And, you know, it's very heartening to also see that there is a, so much of maturity among people children uh, especially at the stage when they are really developing they could easily be a little bit more you know you know a little bit more pushy towards the parents but they tend to really understand in fact even mm-hmm. in my case I, I i can relate to that my own daughter who is yeah. who is just yeah. nine uh, she also has a far better understanding than what let's say we had at that her, exactly her age. that i yeah. really feel that i really yeah. feel yeah. also in case of shanti that's amazing yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. So, uh, Aditi, now that we have kind of got some kind of an overview of your uh, kind of personal life also, uh, I would want to broaden the perspective to understanding your views on science in India. Okay. As I mentioned, you are a, a top-notch scientist. You also are decorated in the sense you also are the only woman uh uh, Bhatnagar awardee, uh, a, a physicist to get the award. And uh, that really, you know, heartened, heartened us a lot that uh, you, you ended up getting that particular prize. Of course, that prize is now in the limbo, <laughs> so to yeah. speak. But uh, uh, you had a very interesting anecdote, anecdote to say when the award uh, was released. Can you tell us uh, what happened in terms of the Wikipedia and other things? <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I think that uh, some of the Wikipedia page came up in my name. And uh, one of our colleagues uh, from abroad, actually, uh, he's a faculty in uh, UK. He suddenly noticed that uh, everything is written as he, not he. Like, okay. Yeah. They, not, uh, they're referring to you as a, as a male. He, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was really... <laughs> nice and he first noticed this thing and okay. uh, mentioned uh, in uh, so it's still there in facebook this kind of uh, conversation so okay but he mentioned <laughs> Very... that uh, uh, you have i mean <laughs> your name and after that pronounce is he he so, okay okay yeah it, it also tells that Sometimes people really don't uh, uh, kind of by default the thinking process is that that should yeah. be a, 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 a man uh, who, who has got an award or something like that. Or uh, even uh, science, if you are doing science, then yeah. you will be. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because so what is your broader perspective, Aditi, in terms of uh, how the science is done in India? Because you you work for a long time in Europe, you work with some of the very big shots, like you know. Even I think Roy Glauber, who is a Nobel laureate, yeah. uh, and uh, even uh, other people like Macek himself is, you know, probably a contender for a Nobel Prize at some point of time. So you really work with very big people. You also have contributed to some very great papers and other things. Uh, but uh, having kind of had that absolute cutting edge experience in doing research, and you kind of compare that to Indian situation. Like, uh, how has your experience been? What can we do better in Indian science? Especially Indian science, I'm, I'm specifically asking. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I mean, I must say, as I already mentioned that, you know, if we look at the theoretical physics side, that probably yeah. is already visible, okay? Yes, So whatever areas you want to talk, whether condensed matter physics, string theory, high energy physics, astrophysics, there are already very many leading scientists from India. And we know many of them. 
right? I mean, we studied their uh, theory during our Absolutely. course work and so on. So, uh, so that that's already kind of uh, there are cutting edge and uh, probably it's not with the ratio of number the population wise yeah, if yeah. you like but that's because of our uh, growth economic growth the facilities and so on i'm sure this is increasing so the number of students who have passed 10 standard in my time in 1990s and now mm -hmm. is a huge difference huge okay. difference absolutely and that's why absolutely. we require more institutions more universities colleges and so on because we have to we also want some people to go to higher education right so absolutely in that sense i think that the, there are more and more possibilities coming up in experimental side if i look it was true that we are uh, kind of lacking uh, but that also i understand that this is also related to economy right yes yeah, because uh, you have to because i need a laptop i need a desktop i need a cluster which is a facility of the institute okay institute. that's yeah. all i don't need other things are my uh, there is a printer i require which can be a, also the central facility that's all so any institutes in 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 the in india they have these facilities or they can provide but on the other hand experimentalists depending on the experiments you are doing there can be very uh, you know the instruments that you are buying which requires a very high quality you require maybe not uh, that uh, not all are from india you have to purchase from outside and so on so it also related to economy okay absolutely and absolutely. i also think in experiments also you require not only the person experimentalists that are doing alone the research you need a team so absolutely. it's not only there are several kinds like phd's you require scientists technicians and so on so you require a pool of people who will be helping you to reach the uh, the the thing and so i think that's also important because that's related to economy and that's related to the pool of students who are coming to higher education so that's why i said that in last 14 years there are a lot of advancements and it is possible because more and more students are coming for higher education they are because the economy is somehow growing so people are taking a chance that they can come to this profession okay Absolutely. And so they are coming and all the time you are also getting some technicians which are coming and also, you know, your facilities are coming and so on. So I'm saying the one part is the buying instruments, getting grants that even if that is fulfilled, you require more and more people to have a very good group of experimentalists. On the other hand, in case of theory, not that much required. Okay, so I think that's why the in Indian perspective, it's coming up and I hope yeah. with more and more uh, students, more and universities, we will have because we need all many trained people for each individual, uh, for each experimentalist. And that is what it, it should be. It should. And I think I believe that it will be improving enormously the car we will be exponentially good <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will go to a, really in a in this classical regime this exponential is exponential. for a better for better thing right i mean not all exponential, exponential. with a positive positive exponent hopefully <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah so what i say that not always the uh you know the, this is giving you a exponential kind of speed up speed in our up. experimental uh, you know facilities and the quality of research and so on yeah and that's i mean you are the pioneer one of the great scientists experimentalists whom i always i want to know more about your work the unfortunate thing my knowledge is so limited that i most of them in many well things. well no no it's a the learning is mutual in fact that is always the case even i have to learn so many things uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. i've i've really enjoyed a, lo a lot of discussions i have had over the years i should mention that aditi was uh, was very active uh, and uh, some of our talks when i when we were at ICFO was you know was a was a kind of an occasion to really learn there are so many interesting things 
and there were a lot of uh, interesting discussions i still remember you know vividly remember there was a lake outside uh, the exactly. the fort where there used to be discussions and other things yeah. you know it's not just about science you know everything you know we were all away from india we were talking about what are the interesting things which should change in india and how things Society. that was outstanding yeah. time right yeah, uh, yeah. it's true it was really yeah. amazing yeah amazing true. yeah 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 Yeah. So now uh, we have just discussed a little bit about science in India, but I would also want to emphasize that um, there might be a lot of people who might want to listen to you in your mother tongue. Okay, and uh, you know that is one of the important aspect of uh, Pratidwani where we try to humanize science, and I've been always emphasizing that it's important to diversify in terms of the language of science. in the sense it need not be only in english and uh, what i want to set a trend is that my guests whomsoever comes on to this particular kind of podcast i generally re- will now request them to also speak a little bit about about, about their uh, research and about their motivations uh, in in their mother tongue and in this case it's uh, bengali so yeah. i would request you to just uh, tell us a little bit although i may not understand it correctly but my listeners will some of them uh, and also give us a little bit of translation of what you told about that that will be great to uh, listen to uh, aditi please please let us know yeah so i should tell only i should tell also the science or i just say some things my experience what yeah yeah, yeah. It, it can be first about a little bit of science and a little bit of your experience and motivation for anybody who is listening okay. in in bengali yeah. in this particular case okay yeah. okay so i mean okay it's also for me to difficult to suddenly translate Switch. in bengali but uh, it is you can use the english words in between of course that's I how we speak uh, uh, in to. in uh, yeah. right yeah, yeah. okay so মানে আমি যেটাতে কাজ করি সেটা মানে যে সাবজেক্টটায় কাজ করি সেটাকে বলে কোয়ান্টাম ইনফরমেশন অ্যান্ড কম্পিটিশন সো তার মানে হচ্ছে যে সমস্ত টেকনোলজিগুলো আমরা ইউজ করি কম্পিউটার কমিউনিকেশন লাইক ইন্টারনেট দিয়ে যেটা দিয়ে কানেক্টেড মোবাইল ফোন এটসেট্রা এবং অন্য অনেক ডিভাইসেস যেগুলো দিয়ে আমরা বিভিন্ন টাইপের যেমন ব্যাটারি দিয়ে আমরা এনার্জি স্টোর করি রেফ্রিজারেটার ইউজ করি ঠান্ডা করার জন্য সেই সমস্ত জিনিসগুলো যে সমস্ত যে প্রিন্সিপাল ইউজ করে আমরা এখন তৈরি করি সেগুলোকে ক্লাসিক্যাল মেকানিক্স বলা যায় আর আমরা যেটা আমি যেটা তৈরি করার বা আমাদের আমরা যারা কোয়ান্টাম ইনফরমেশনে কাজ করি তারা যেটা তৈরি করার চেষ্টা করছে সেটা হচ্ছে কোয়ান্টাম ভার্সান অফ দিস টেকনোলজিস সো আমরা কোয়ান্টাম টেকনোলজি বানানোর চেষ্টা করছি তার মানে হচ্ছে কোয়ান্টাম কম্পিউটার কোয়ান্টাম কমিউনিকেশন টেকনোলজি কোয়ান্টাম ব্যাটারি এটসেট্রা এই কাজগুলোর মাধ্যমে যেমন একদিক দিয়ে টেকনোলজিতে একটা রেভলিউশন হবে একটা বিবর্তন হবে সেরকমভাবে কোয়ান্টাম মেকানিক্সের যে আমাদের আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং যে আমাদের ধ্যান ধারণা যেগুলো সেগুলোরও অনেক কিছু জিনিস উন্নত হবে এবং হচ্ছে প্রতিনিয়ত আর এটাই হয়তো কারণ যে সারা বিশ্বে বহু লোকেরা এই বিষয়টা নিয়ে ইন্টারেস্টেড এবং এটা একটা খুব ইন্টার ডিসিপ্লিনারি সাবজেক্ট এর সাথে যেমন ফিজিক্সের লোকেরা কাজ করে তেমন গণিতে মানে গণিতবিদ্যা ম্যাথামেটিশিয়ানরা কাজ করে কম্পিউটার সায়েন্টিস্টরাও তাতে কাজ করে আবার বায়োলজিস্টরাও আজকাল কাজ করতে শুরু করেছে এটসেট্রা এই জায়গায় কাজ করার জন্য মোটামুটিভাবে অ্যাজ আই সেড এটা যেহেতু ইন্টার ডিসিপ্লিনারি যে কোনো বিষয়েই মাস্টার্স ডিগ্রি করা থাকলে ম্যাথামেটিক্স ফিজিক্স কম্পিউটার সায়েন্স এবং তারপরে পিএইচডি করলেই মোটামুটিভাবে এই বিষয়ে কাজ করা সম্ভব এই সাবজেক্টটায় এবারে একটা দিক হচ্ছে যে মানে কাজের ব্যাপারে যদি আমার অভিজ্ঞতার কথা বলা হয় তাহলে আমার একটাই জিনিস মনে হয় যে সেটা হচ্ছে হার্ড ওয়ার্ক আর সিনসিয়ারিটি এই দুটো থাকলেই যে কোনো বিষয়ে রিসার্চ করা সম্ভব ডান ওয়ান্ডারফুল দ্যাট ইজ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক আদিতি আই আই রিয়েলি রিয়েলি ইউ নো অ্যাপ্রিশিয়েট দ্যাট ইউ মেড অ্যান এফার্ট টু রিয়েলি এক্সপ্লেইন দিস সো এলোকোয়েন্টলি দিস ইজ সামথিং হুইচ ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট ইউ নো দ্যাট ইজ ভেরি ক্রিউশিয়াল ফর আস টু রিয়েলি গেট টু নো 
uh, what you're doing uh, in your own mother tongue and i'm very sure it will be of very high benefit to people who understand the language in fact that is one of the strengths of our country in the sense uh, we do have such a huge diversity in terms of culture language food everything which uh, which makes uh, uh, the life even more interesting so also tell a little bit about your your uh, you know uh, hobbies and uh, what do you do what kind of stuff you do during uh, during your breaks and what what is your general kind of uh, go to activity to relax and do things yeah. yeah actually i probably have started mentioning about my uh, you know my subject and i forgot to mention about my group so my group yeah. is uh, uh now a bit big so i mean bit big in a sense that at least for me its handling is getting uh, difficult from the perspective of time although the students and pos i mean without them i cannot work at all and so uh, there are almost uh, uh, 10 kind of 8 plus 2 i mean 10 phd students there are post docs and yes, uh, yes. so there are some master students so around 15 16 people are working wow and that's a big group for theoretical physics huh yeah so yeah. Uh, so i really don't get much time so from the morning i usually spend time i come i wake up and i come to the office and this is mm-hmm. the only probably now relaxing time that i have but okay. other than that uh, if i get a bit more time i actually like to listen music nice uh, and uh, watch movies mm-hmm. so now i don't get time to watch movies in the cinema hall okay. hardly <laughs> i get time so what i do due to youtube and other channels and etc where i get the, i can pay subscription yeah. Uh, yeah. most of the time i don't watch but that at least gives a, gives me kind of you know uh at least a flexibility that i flexibility. watch a whole one week one movie nice nice think so oh, you you break it into parts and then watch it yeah, isn't it yeah it can be you can think that it's very boring but usually even i started kind of you know this was initially not very good because now i at least have a control that i stop any point and i do point, something yes. and then <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. in that way i finish it in a week So this no, no, is no. a lot of things for example i listen to podcasts in a similar way yeah, in one yeah. go it's difficult to really listen a very long one or something yeah like yeah that. so this but is but wh- what kind of movies and what kind of uh, music are you interested in? okay so yeah i mean actually i i mean in my childhood i was trained to something called rabindra sangeet so yeah yeah uh, yeah so i like to listen rabindra sangeet but at the same time i want to also listen bengali especially the new kind of because there are a lot of kind of uh, now going on many kind of research or i should say many uh, changes in bengali songs which i listen also the hindi songs anything cinemas uh, okay i i can watch any cinemas that's not the issue but <laughs> okay. i prefer to watch something which has some messages at the end so a bit mm-hmm. better and uh, something which i usually watch so i make sometimes some list that okay that movie i have to watch at some point and so on and in between if i get time i watch something which is uh, available in all these platforms uh, you know where you can have subscriptions like that so these are the two things i also read books but yes, again yes. i uh, yeah, that uh, that was actually one of the main hobbies hobbies um, yeah in my childhood and till uh, today so wherever i travel i always carry one story book uh, always in my What, who is your favorite author generally which is the one you like to read more <laughs> I don't have much but maybe some books which are mm. very genre so some kind of uh, yeah you like so, fiction or non fiction uh, yeah it's fiction mostly i okay i spend lot of time reading bengali books as you know that has nice. a very strong tradition absolutely so, absolutely uh, so i like uh, those books uh, many of them so uh, many have really contributed also a lot 
in my, uh, you know, uh, during my young age and so on. So this wonderful. is my usual hobby. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. Uh, this is something very fascinating to to know. But uh, generally in the institute, you will also have to teach uh, undergrads yeah. or something like yeah. that. Right? No, not you undergrads, lost... master's students. Master's students, yes. Yeah. master's and PhD coursework. So I teach. Hmm. And uh, other also I do research. And... What do you generally teach? Uh, what course do you uh, generally okay, teach? Okay, so uh, as a normal course like quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, mm, also okay. it can be advanced course like quantum yeah, information yeah. and computation also. Wonderful, wonderful. So Aditi, uh, we'll, we are almost coming towards the conclusion. So uh, I would want you to just give us kind of a slightly broader picture of where where your research is going towards. What are your plans? How do you want to take your research now? In what direction it is it is going? And uh, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. So if I uh, think as I already said, uh, in my group actually is kind of divided into two kind of parts. I mean, mm-hmm. one part is really concentrating on. Uh, kind of how to really implement quantum technologies in physical systems and what are the uh, noises, what are the decoherence that is affecting their performance and how to overcome them. That's also a very important point because just showing that noise is reducing performance is not enough. We have no, to no. also yes. say that what are the, how to overcome them. So this is one direction that we are now very much concentrating. So we are also seeing that suppose you want to implement some quantum algorithm in a quantum computer. So what kind of noises, what kind of imperfections that are coming up, how they're affecting the algorithms and the resources available into the system so that they're by affecting the algorithm and so on. So that part we are working. And another part probably is more on the, how to really characterize uh, quantum resources which are responsible for quantum advantage in quantum technologies. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a more basic research, or I should say, quantum information theory has a lot of this kind of perspective. Absolutely. So that that we are also doing. At the same time, also I was uh, not only the technology. So there, as I said, there are kind of difference when we talk about quantum technologies like computer sensor, etc. These are Based can be based on many body system. On the other hand, Absolutely. communications will be with a photonic system, continuous variable mm-hmm. systems, and so on. So there also we concentrate how to really have a, uh, we have a quantum communication devices, how to improve uh, communication devices, and so on. So where the photonic uh, say continuous variable systems, how really they will be useful, and so on. So these are probably three main directions. Uh, which we are working. Recently also I started working on something non-Hermitian quantum mechanics, which are kind of related also to the Hermitian one if we mm-hmm. look at the coherence. Uh, mm-hmm. So these are kind of related, but that is a kind of learning experience for me because uh, this is uh, also different directions which I haven't, I have never explored before because you need to redefine many things in uh, in a non-Hermitian domain, which is not wonderful. Really wonderful. Yeah. So this is another uh, perspective. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, I, I assume you also are uh, on uh, on the editorial board of a uh, few journals, right? I know you are also busy with some of the things. How has that experience been? Uh, because I know you are also actively involved in some of our Indian journals, and yeah. that is an important thing. Uh, do you want to just tell a couple of sentences on that if you want? Yeah, so it's a, I mean, kind of if you are in an editorial board, you have to, actually you can also see how the science are growing in, say, in India or in yeah. abroad. So I'm in an editorial board in Indian Journal as well as I'm in some editorial board members yes. Also yes. outside. And so you can see that the how the overall picture, what are the kind of, you know, papers are coming, how you are yeah. evaluating uh, sometimes it comes that there are kind of, you know, uh, referee reports which are kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
both of them are not agreeing, but what is agreeing, your opinion yeah. and so on, then you have to be careful and so on. <laughs> and in that case, what are the quality can be improved from Indian perspective? We also can see what are the papers are coming and how to improve that. Uh, so this is also a nice experience. So uh, how to make really policies uh, so that you can also improve some of the Indian very old journals and so on. So Absolutely. this is interesting. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. So this has been a wonderful conversation, Aditi. I am sure Thank this you. will not be the last conversation uh, we'll have on Pratidwani with you. Uh, at some point of time, we will also ask you to come back and uh, probably give us a little bit more elaborate uh, thoughts on some of the things what you've been doing. I know you're you're uh, also you know doing a lot of uh, research, and uh, I explicitly thank you for taking out time uh, and uh, and spending this wonderful kind of. This is uh, pleasure, uh, you know. Time. Yeah, talking with uh, you is a is a, such a nice experience. I even same here, same here. I even haven't realized that we have spent so much time. I thought yeah. <laughs> to talk less, but as you know, I speak quite a lot. <laughs> No, no, no. In fact, th- that's the precisely the point. In fact, th- this is the platform for us to really discuss a lot yeah. of things. And Pratidwani, I should mention that um, the main motivation is to uh, bring people in also from various different scientific backgrounds. And uh, the main motivation is to humanize science, as I've yeah. been telling, yeah. that's because amazing. that the element is very crucial. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I really appreciate I don't know how to appreciate actually because I really am thankful that you are such a big, I mean, you know, I mean, I have a lot of respect uh, towards your research. And uh, so even then, after such a busy schedule, you are taking out time and doing this. I am following this uh, in your Facebook. Uh, whenever you put something, although I'm not very actively commenting, as you know, I'm a bit hesitant on in a global yeah. platform to comment unless someone poked me. So I am usually silently looking at, I don't know how you are, I really want to learn. I know you are a very good organizer. That I have already yeah. experienced when you are doing, you know, we are together at ICFO. So even yeah. later on, whenever we met, I, I have seen you. I mean, terrific. I mean, uh, I really I've, I've learned a lot from people like you. I should mention yeah. that. <laughs> I really, okay. You should not see my organization skill. You should not follow. <laughs> that is, I am really not very good. But I think you were amazing. I mean, what you were doing, uh, it's amazing. I mean, this is just a word that I can use. A terrific. No, no, I'm I, I'm thankful to people like you, uh, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that this kind of conversations will continue. And it's important for us to also bring in perspective from various different viewpoints. And exactly. I'm delighted. In fact, I should mention that I'm absolutely delighted to to have you here. And uh, I thank you very much uh, for, for your time. Okay. So I, I hope uh, uh, we'll, we'll have the conversation again. Yeah. And uh, until then, uh, goodbye. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.